What's up, everybody? This is RBT coming at you with week three of my college football predictions for the 2013 college football season. And I apologize, these didn't get put out today. I just had a lot to do. And I don't know why the screen is so bright. Let me try to put the, the light down a little bit. It's still bright as can be. Alright, um, I'm up this white. There we go. It's kind of, uh, went down a little bit. But, anyways, how's it going, guys? I tried to do a live stream for this, but I could not figure out how to do that. It was really complicated. I had no clue how to do all that. So, here we am. I wanted to do that because I want this video to be uploaded quick tonight so I can uh, have some people watch it today. Because I know you guys, this is like one of my most popular videos on YouTube, is my prediction videos. And I didn't get it uploaded earlier, so and they usually run generally generally long. So I apologize, and I'm trying to make this as short as possible so I can get this uploaded in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm gonna go through this really really quick and try to make this the quickest prediction video yet, so it can be uploaded tonight. And hope maybe in the future if something like this happens, I can figure out how to live stream actually and get all this stuff figured out. So let's get started. And if oh if and if you saw it say I started to broadcast a live event, let me know because I want to know if it actually said that or what. I'm, I'm I don't know if it actually did anything I said or not. But Troy, Arkansas State, Arkansas State. I know they got beat by Auburn last week, but they're one of the most dangerous teams in the Sun Belt. They'll beat Troy, um, 35 to 27. Tulane lost to my school, South Alabama Jaguars, last week. That was honestly our program's biggest win in, in program history thus far. And Louisiana Tech, not as good as they used to be. Or last year, they lost a lot. Haven't played that well this season. And they, and it's shown that they lost so much. I don't think Skip Holtz really could hire there. And I think Tulane's going to bounce back and beat Tulane, uh, Louisiana Tech in, in a close victory. I'll say I'll say 32-28 to 28 in this game. And there we go. A really good game, actually. Texas Tech and TCU I'm actually really pumped for this game. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. I think I think um, Casey Pahal is gonna be out for this game. From what I heard, he fractured his arm. Uh, Texas Tech looked really good, but they haven't played great competition thus far. But they they've looked amazing offensively. We'll get to see how they play in this game. It's gonna be a prime time game at home, and I think Cliff Kingsbury is ready to play. I think he's gonna get his team the W. I think it's gonna be close, but Texas Tech I think is for real. But we'll be we'll find out if I'm if I'm right or wrong this week. We'll, we'll know if Texas Tech can step in there and uh, be a contender in the Big 12. Because I think the Big 12 is wide open this year as it's been in a very long time. But I'll go in a shootout. Texas Tech 38, TCU 35. Very close. And Boise versus Air Force. I think if anybody in the Mountain West wants to knock out Boise, this is the year. They just don't have the talent they used to. Um, not nearly as good as they have been in years past. That's, that's obviously obvious. I mean, uh, when they got swacked by... Uh, Washington week one, that, that was obvious that that was going to be the case. But let's see if Washington is actually a contender in the Pac-12. So, I mean, it's just really hard to base things off the first couple of weeks. So you don't know who's actually good. you got to wait till they play each other. But uh, Air Force, I believe, will come up short in this game. Boise with the blue turf at home on a Friday night. Uh, Boise's hard to beat on a Friday night at home. So I'm going to go Boise. Close, uh, 31-28. to 28. Very close. Bowling Green versus Indiana. Indiana really disappointed me. I thought they were going to blow out Navy and RG just, RG3 just threw a pick. But, um, anyways, Indiana really disappointed me last week. I think, uh, I don't know what happened to their offense. Boise State, um, I mean, Navy just blew him up. They couldn't really get as much as going as they wanted to on offense. And I thought this was the year they could actually make a bowl game. I'm not too stern anymore. Bowling Green's looked very good the first couple weeks. They Blew out Kent State last week. It was a BCS team last season. Uh, they blew out Tulsa, who's usually a good team in the CUSA, and a good team overall. So I must say Bowling Green gets the upset. And Bowling Green, watch out. If they do get the win this week, watch out for them being one of those teams that can sneak up there and be a BCS contender. Get that one of those uh, automatic at-large bids for a non-BCS uh, qualifier. And that depends, though, if Fresno State goes undefeated or not. But... I'll go Bowling Green in a shootout, 42 to 40 over Indiana in this game. Louisville versus Kentucky. Um, I don't know, guys. Louisville is good. They're very good, and I'm not saying I don't know in a side as I think Louisville might lose. No, they're gonna win. But I'm trying to think if this is really Louisville's toughest game of the season, and I hate it for them. 
but it's just the schedule. This is not good, and, and that's gonna gonna turn some voters away. But I hope they find a way to sneak themselves up there in the polls. But they should have no problem with Kentucky. Kentucky, I believe, will improve over time when, uh, under Mark Stoops. But when you get beaten by Western Kentucky two years in a row, uh, I'm still not sold on them just yet. Even playing at home, I'll take Louisville by three touchdowns, 38 to 20 over Kentucky. Michigan over Akron, easy, 45-10. Minnesota over Western Illinois. Watch out. This could be closer than people think, but I think Minnesota's ready to make that next step and be an eight-win team this season. If you look at their schedule, that can set up really well. But I'll have them going uh, winning 35-21 to 21 in this game. Virginia take over East Carolina. This will be closer than the expert think, experts think. East Carolina is still undefeated on the season. They'll make it very close playing at home, which is a dangerous environment. East Carolina has might have the best non-BCS team environment. They have better a better environment in some SEC schools, honestly. It's it's really it's packed out there. They have a just overall great environment and great experience here at East Carolina. And I'll have them losing just because Virginia Tech's defense is amazing. We'll have East Carolina win close. I mean, losing close. I have Virginia Tech 24 to 21 over East Carolina. Just watch out. East Carolina beat Virginia Tech a, a couple years ago. So just watch out for that. Nebraska versus UCLA. Okay. Um, this is going to be close. But as of right now, I'm not sold on Nebraska's defense whatsoever. Almost lost to Wyoming. Gave up 34 points to Wyoming. With that said, Wyoming is actually. A great offensive team, but UCLA is a step forward from Wyoming. I know it's going to be tough at home uh, playing at Nebraska for UCLA, but I believe Brett Hundley, their offense is ready to take the next step as a program in the Pac-12. I think they're going to beat Nebraska this season. I think they're going to beat Nebraska by a touchdown. I'll go to UCLA 38, Nebraska 31 in this game. Tulsa and Oklahoma. And this, I, I'm just waiting. Oklahoma, they have an amazing defense, but just like USC, you can have a good defense, but if you have no offense to go along with that defense, you can lose any game at any given moment. And they'll win this game, but closer than the experts think. I'll say like a 21 to 10 point victory. Their defense, though, the Oklahoma's defense this year is, more, is the most legitimate defense I've seen in the past nine years or so from Oklahoma. That's how good they are. But their offense and their Trevor Knight is putrid so far. They're putrid. Maybe they'll pick up the slack, but right now I'm not sold on them. And they do say defense wins championships, but it don't matter if you if you scored nothing nothing in the fourth quarter. I mean, you're not gonna get the win, are you? But they'll they'll find a way, a couple ways to scratch out some points against Tulsa. But watch out, close victory, closer than the experts think, none the least. But I'll say Oklahoma 21 up Tulsa 10. West Virginia versus Georgia State. Don't know what happened in that West Virginia offense. I know they lost Edmund Bailey, Tavon Austin, Geno Smith. And however many people they are on offense, but still under Dana, Dana, Dana Holgerson with the running backs that they got transferred in from Pitt and, and uh, Houston, they should be scoring more points than they are. They've only scored a total of 31 points a season against William and Mary and Oklahoma combined. And I think they'll get on track this week just because Georgia State is honestly the worst FBS level program I have seen in my lifetime by far. Georgia State is horrible. Horrible. I'm talking about a team that's in the Sun Belt now. I'm not sure if they're eligible for an actual Sun Belt championship, but they're they're playing the Sun Belt level schedule now because they're up in FBS level. I think this is their transitional year, but still, they're still considered the FBS level team. They're horrible. Last season, they went 1-10 against FCS teams, getting blown out by Chattanooga, by uh, Western Carolina, those teams. And with that said, they lost to Chattanooga last week by 30-plus points. West Virginia, if they don't score 30-something points in this game, I don't know what, what in God's name could have possibly happened because that's horrible. But I'll go West Virginia. I'll I'll give them 40 points. I'll go West Virginia 42, Georgia State 7. And, and if Chattanooga can score 40 points in Georgia State, West Virginia can't. Something's wrong there. Okay, Stanford at Army. This is going to be an interesting game. Army tends to play Stanford very hard, and um, not surprising because, I mean, they're going to be pumped for this game playing at Army, which can be interesting. If you're a team like Stanford and you go away to play anywhere, 
especially like a team like Army, it'll be tough and it'll be interesting. But Sanford will win defense alone. Their defense is amazing. Sanford might have the best defense in the country. But I'll go Stanford by by 14. I'll go Stanford. I'll go Stanford 28, Army, Army 14. It's a little bit closer than people think, but they'll be fine. Arkansas versus Southern Miss. Okay. So the Miss has the longest losing streak in the country, and they keep killing me because I keep saying they're not they are not the worst team in the country. And that's hard to say for a team that's lost 14-plus in a row, but they're not as bad as people think. They're okay. They are. They're, I mean, they're, they're, they're okay. They're not really bad, really, really bad as their record. They're, they might be maybe the 100th, that 90 to 100th team ranked uh, um, in the country. They're not bad as the Idaho's, Georgia State's, that's obvious. But they, they're still they're still a tricky team. They really are. And but just for the – I mean, if this wasn't a team in the middle of a 14-game losing streak, I would not – I would give them a chance against Arkansas with the way Arkansas is playing. Arkansas almost lost to Sanford last week, so I think Southern Miss has a chance just based on the performance that they had last week. But I can't give a team with, like, 14 straight losses a win against Arkansas. And I think Arkansas will win by 17. I'll go Arkansas, Arkansas 37, so I'll give Southern Miss 17 points, I'll give them a 20 point victory, Arkansas 37, Southern Miss 27, Wake Forest versus Louisiana Monroe, Louisiana Monroe really disappointed me week one against Oklahoma, I thought they actually had a chance that week and they made me look stupid, they got shut out, but that's obviously shown because Oklahoma has such a great defense this season, and I think they'll score points against Wake Forest, and I think they'll upset Wake Forest, Wake Forest looked dismal in their game against Boston College last week. Uh, Tanner Price is a great quarterback, but the way their coaching staff and Jim Grobe is running that offense is like they're, they're no matter what they're wanting to run the option. Even though Tanner Price looks really good in the pocket when he's running the option, speed options, pitching the ball, he looks horrible. And and I mean he came there to be a pro style quarterback, and that's what he is. And running the option, he's not comfortable. And I think this is a game that losing to Monroe goes into Winston Salem and pulls out the W upset. I say they win this game 34 to. 30 over Wake Forest. Pittsburgh versus New Mexico. Pittsburgh, if they can play like they did in the first quarter against against Florida State, they can be a team that I believe can make a bowl game this season. But that's I don't believe how they're going to play all season. They're they're okay. They're not a bad team, but I, they, they should get a win against New Mexico. I'll say 31 to 10 against New Mexico. No problem. Rutgers versus Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan actually gave Penn State a game early on in the first half. It was closer than people thought, but then Penn State ended up blowing them out in the second half. But anyways, Rutgers should get the W in this game. Shouldn't be a problem. I'll go um, 31-7, to Rutgers over Eastern Michigan. Temple should beat Forham. They should. And I'll go Temple 28-14, to but you never know. It's Temple. Okay, Fresno State versus Colorado. Uh, Colorado, they've got off to the the best start and and that two and zero than they've had in God knows how many years. I believe Mike McIntyre is going to be a good coach. Um, he's going to lead them to better days than they've seen in the dead Dan Hawkins day Dan Hawkins days. And ever since they've they've uh, joined the Pac-12 conference, um, and they do have two wins. There will be more powerful storms. That's Sorry about that amazing. ad. Um, they have two wins against Colorado State, their in-state rival. In Central Arkansas, but Fresno State, man, they're a different team. They are good. Fresno State is good, and if they get past Colorado, which I think they do, they could be that team to run the table this year and make it to a BCS bowl. And I believe Fresno State's quarterback Derek Carr will throw the ball all over Colorado, and they'll win this game in a shootout, 42 to 35 over Colorado. Michigan State versus Youngstown State. Watch out. Youngstown State's 2-0 and in the FCS. They're a decent team. And when you're a team like Michigan State, whose offense is absolutely dismal right now, the defense, though, is amazing. They're right up there, top five in the country with the um, overall defense. But like I said, if you can't score, um, the games are going to be close no matter what. And they'll, they'll win this game, uh, but it's going to be a lot closer than people think just because it's Youngstown State. But Youngstown State, they've been blowing out some FCS teams. And we've seen how... FCS teams have been able to play against FBS this year, um, and Michigan State's a team that only put up, only scored two offensive touchdowns last week against Florida Atlantic, who I mean not Florida Atlantic, wow Southern Florida, who got put, who McNeese State put up 55 points against week one. So watch out, but I think Michigan State will win this game, 30, 30 to 30 to seven over Youngstown State. I think Youngstown State sneaks in a, a touchdown there. 
All right. Um, Boston College versus USC. One of the upset picks of the week. If Boston College can win this game, I can't. Gosh, so many. I'm so tired. I've been having such a long day, and all these fans are blowing in my face, giving me eye irritation. But Boston College has a really tough schedule. But if they can get past this game, who knows what can happen? I mean, their their quarterback Chase Reddick. He's. I mean, he started since he's been a freshman, and well, he's got a lot of playing time since he's been a freshman. And he's. I mean, wow. Washington just got a safety. They're playing horrible, man. Um, but anyways, I believe they'll be able to beat USC. I really do. USC's offense is putrid, putrid. If they can only score seven points against Washington State's defense, but Boston College, I believe, is better than Washington State. I do. Their offense is a lot better than they've been in years past. Defense is pretty good. Uh, even though it's Villanova Wake Forest only giving up 12 points a game right now, and USC's quarterback, Ooh, horrible, horrible, one of the worst in college football, honestly. And I'll say Boston College squeaks out this victory much like, but USC's defense is good now. And Boston College's offense, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to put up a ton of points, but I will go, I'll go Boston College 17, USC 13 in an upset victory. Colorado State against Cal Poly. Cal Poly can put up some points, but Colorado State can run the ball down their throat, and they'll win 35-21. Uh, Florida State versus Nevada. Watch out, Florida State fans. Nevada could hang in there for a while, but I was really impressed with Jameis Winston week one, and he should put up some points this game. They'll win. They'll put up 40 points. Watch out for Nevada scoring plus 20. Um, but it won't be more than a three-touchdown game. Nevada will keep it close in the first half. Remember, this is the first quarter, but Florida State will pull away. Depth will pull away. Uh... Give them a 42 to 42 to 20 point victory over Nevada. Duke versus Georgia Tech. Who do I want to go with? Duke's undefeated on the season. Their quarterback Anthony Boone's been injured, but I'm not sure if he's coming back to this game. Honestly, I don't know. But their second string came in and played quite well last week, got them the victory over Memphis. I think they won 28 to 14. And Georgia Tech's on the game season has been against Elon, and Elon they blew out 70 to nothing. And, I mean, when you're a team like Georgia Tech, when you blow out teams like that, it's generally, generally meaning you're going to have a good offense. I mean, even though it's against Elon. Well, that can mean one of two things. Either though, either they just absolutely destroyed Elon because they're terrible depth on defense, or they had a good offense. I mean, it's one of the two. I'm not sure if I'm ready to give Duke the leeway here. Um, I want to go Duke, but my mind is telling me Georgia, Georgia Tech. And with that, my heart's wanting to tell me Duke, but I don't want to look stupid. I'll go Georgia Tech close, but don't don't be surprised if Duke pulls the upset. Because I think Duke's ready to go back to back in bowl games this season. I mean, the last two seasons. So I'll go Georgia Tech 31, Duke 28, in a close, close victory. Oh God, Alabama versus Virginia or versus Texas A&M. I'm just gonna give a score. Um, man, do I want to give a prediction? And what lets you watch my video comes out tomorrow. I haven't made it yet, but it's gonna be it's gonna be real good. Um, let's oh, let's just say Alabama wins. I won't get you any other prediction. Stay tuned tomorrow for my Alabama versus Texas and then hate week preview video next tomorrow. Um, make sure you watch that Buffalo versus Stony Brook. Buffalo, Buffalo. That's all I can say. By fourteen, I'll go twenty eight, thirty one to seventeen over Stony Brook. Navy versus Delaware. Joe Flacco's alma mater. Navy 1-0 against Indiana. Maybe Navy's one. Let's take, take a look at Navy's schedule real quick. I want to see, because I'm always interested in seeing what teams could possibly go undefeated and make a, maybe make a BCS ball and surprise some people. Now they, they ran for 44, 444 yards last week against, against Indiana. That's crazy. But hey, man, um, look at Navy. They play Delaware. That should be a win. Western Kentucky. Toss up Air Force, talk up, toss up Duke, toss up Toledo, toss up Pittsburgh, Pitt, North Notre Dame. Upsets can happen. Hawaii, South Alabama, San Jose State should go to San Jose State. I mean, not the only for sure loss in that schedule was Notre Dame. Maybe Navy can be that team to come out and shock the world and make a BCS Bowl. That's just thought. But they should be Delaware close. Uh, they, they always play close in these types of games, but I'll go Navy. Navy 45, Delaware 28. Okay, Tennessee versus Oregon. I kind of embarrassed myself last week because I tweeted right before the Oregon game against Virginia started. I said, Virginia will keep this game closer than people think, but they will lose. 
Um, and they ended up getting beat by 49. But with that said, Tennessee does have possibly the best offensive line in the country. They do. I'm not really sold on their skill position players just yet. Justin Woolley, though, I believe by the time he graduates next season, he'll be a mid mid tier quarterback in the SEC. He'll he'll be, he'll be pretty good. Um, now Oregon, on the other hand, their offense is amazing. I'm not sure if Tennessee's defense is ready to uh, stay up to up with them, but uh, I think it'll be closer than people think. Which is, I think they're predicted to lose by 28 points. Or that's the line right now. I'll give them a 21 point victory. That's Oregon over Tennessee. I'll go 48 to 27, Oregon over Tennessee. But just, I mean, in these type of games, you never know. Tennessee can come out and shock the country. You, you just don't, you just don't know what can happen. But props to Oregon. I really like the way they set up the schedule. I mean, teams like Oregon, Alabama, they, they should be playing teams. I mean. I mean, I understand when a team doesn't want to play number one, make out of conference games against number one team in the country. That I mean, that's just a dumb thing to do. I know it's great for the fans, great for your strength and schedule, but that's just dumb. You can get away without playing those games. That's just dumb. But when you play, I mean, a couple of decent schools, you throw in a, a Virginia, a Tennessee. I mean, that's that's not a bad schedule. I know people will say, "Oh my God, you played no about nobody. You played Tennessee, you played Virginia. That's better quality opponents than a than a um a Wagner State or a San um." Uh, San, San Diego, I don't know, just throwing out FCS school. That's better matchups than that. And I would really respect a team if they got maybe three quality opponents, say like a Virginia, a Tennessee, and who's Oregon's other game against? I mean, I really like this because this just really sp spreads the wealth and makes it fun in college football. Uh, who's there against? Who's it against? Or does the Pac-12 play nine games? The Pac-12 plays nine games. I'm sorry there. Nine conference games, that is. The other game was against, I mean, I can see playing one tune-up game, like a nickel state like they did, and I really like that. Props to Oregon there, but like I said, 48-27, let's say 48-27, Oregon over Tennessee. Well, there's Wagner that I just said, wow. Uh, Syracuse over Wagner, 38-14. Uh, North Texas, Ball State, Ball State undefeated. I love seeing these type of schools undefeated early on, because you never know who can run the table out of these non-BCS conferences. It's always these different schools. Last year was Kent State. This year it could be a Ball State. Last year was Northern Illinois. This year it could be Ball State. You never know, but um, I will go Ball State. Ball State 38-28 over North Texas. North Colorado versus Wyoming. Wyoming will put up a ton of points. 45-10 to 10 over Northern Colorado. Northern Illinois versus Idaho. Idaho, they're, they might be the second worst team in the country. They're, they're they're not up there. They're not nearly as bad as Georgia State, but they're 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 probably the second worst right now in FBS. But I'll go Northern Illinois by 30 points. I'll go 40 to 10. Northern Illinois over Toledo. Wow, over Idaho. Iowa versus Iowa State. Uh, what's this rivalry called? Oh, I can't remember. Um. God. Uh, anyways, um, Iowa State got beat by FCS opponent week one. Iowa was beat by Northern Illinois, who I just mentioned. They came out one last week against an FCS school. This will be tough, but I think Iowa will eke it out in a weird type game. I'll say 17-14 Iowa. Pounding the rock with Mark Wiseman, who's one of my favorite running backs in college football. He'll get the victory. Playing at Iowa State, they'll be close to 17-14 Iowa over Iowa State. Here's another upset pick. UCF versus Penn State, I believe, as of right now, the toughest game on Louisville schedules. Between three, four schools really: Rutgers, Cincinnati, UCF, Houston. And for the better resume, UCF or Houston, if one of these teams can remain undefeated, if UCF can beat Penn State. This will do wonders for Louisville's strength of, out of strength of schedule. Uh, do I want to pull the string? I think they can. US, UCF is really good, honestly. They're, they can they can score some points defensively. I'm not so sure of. But I think UCF will be able to pull the upset. Brian Bortles is a really good quarterback, one of the best in the conference behind Teddy Bridgewater. And I think they'll be able to pull the upset close. I'll say 28-24 to UCF over Penn State. Penn State's first loss in the season. So watch out for UCF. They're a dangerous team. They really are. All right. Old Dominion finally gets to play FCS school. They didn't really hang in last week like I expected them to. Taylor, Tyler, Taylor, Heineke is a good quarterback, though. He'll put up some points against Howard. I'll say Old Dominion 45, Howard 21. Ooh, another under the radar, really good game. Illinois versus Washington. Te two other teams that are undefeated right now, even though Washington's only played one game, that great game against Boise State. 
Washington undefeated right now and coming off a of bye week. So it'll be tough. Illinois shocked me last week. They played extremely well against Cincinnati. Blew out Cincinnati, who blew out Purdue week one. And, um, I mean, you never know. These undefeated teams early on, you don't know who's for real and who's not for real. This will be a game to separate the pretender and the contender. This going to be tough, though. Like I said, Illinois is a lot better than I think they. I thought they were because they struggled. Their defense struggled mightily against uh, was it Southern Illinois, Eastern Illinois, one of the, Ill, the directional Illinois schools in Week One. I think it was a one possession uh, score at the end of the game. But Nathan, Nathan, two really good quarterbacks, Nathan Showhouse from Illinois, Keith Price from Washington. Washington, the tight end will be back in this game. He was suspended for the Week One against Boise State, one of the best tight ends in all of college football. I can't even remember his name. I think it's a weird pronounced name. But uh, man, who to, who to pick? I'm not so I I I don't want to, I want, I would want a team like Illinois to win, but I don't see it. Keith Price in the offense will score a ton of points against Illinois. A, a, a touched a ten point game. You know, Washington 41, Illinois 31. Florida International against Bethune Cookman. Florida International has a can, can potentially has a good offense. I'll go 35 to 21 over Bethune Cookman. Washington State versus Southern Utah, who is 2-0 in the season. They beat my South Alabama Jaguars week one. That may, game made me want to die. Wow, but, oh. Um, I thought it said Southern Utah. I was looking on the schedule. They, they're 2-0 right now. They beat South Alabama my school. And I looked at their scoreboard. It said they beat Fordham last week. I thought it said Fort. They played Fort Lewis, who I'm guessing is a Division two, Division three school. They don't even have a link to go there. <laughs> All these other teams that have links to go to their page, so they don't have a link on their page. That's not good for them, uh, for for Lewis, anyways. But they did beat South Alabama, so I, I, they they were a lot better than I thought. They can run the ball really well, but Washington State can score some points against teams like this. They'll throw up some points all over the board. I think they win by thirty, um, forty-two to twenty. No man, forty-two to to twenty over Southern Utah. Ohio State, where did it go? Ohio State at Cal. Oh man, um, I I'm not saying that I don't like Ohio State. I just don't like the fact I don't. I'm not really that big of a fan of Urban, Urban Meyer and the way that he left Florida, trying kind of really cop his way out. Um, Cal is just not a good team. Uh, they did get the W last week, but struggled mightily. Were blown out by Northern Northwestern week one when Northwestern's two star players, Kane Coulter and then Mark, were both hurt out of the game. And they they battled the FCS school last season. I mean last week, I forget who it was, but Ohio State should pound that defense and they'll win by twenty. I go forty to twenty Ohio State over Cal. Uh man, Auburn versus Mississippi State, a fun game to watch. I always. I, I, I mean, I know I'm a huge Alabama fan, but I, I, for some reason, I, I, I really do like watching Auburn and who they play. It's always just, a, I mean, I, I want Auburn to lose every game. I just, I, this, the game's really entertaining to me. I guess it's because I'm an Alabama fan, Alabama fan and want to watch them lose every week. But, um, it, I mean, this will, this will be a fun game. I know Mississippi State lost week one to Oklahoma State. They couldn't get anything going in that game. Tyler Russell did get hurt. Uh, the defense played well, though, against Oklahoma State. Only allowed 23 points to a team that traditionally scores 40-plus points a game. Uh, who they, play, they played Alcorn State. They got some points on the board last week. This will be a close game, I believe. This game will be show uh, the team that are ready. Whoever loses this game might either come in second to last or last in SEC West. Um, even though I think... I mean, they're, neither of these teams are bad. Nobody in the SEC West. I wouldn't consider anybody in the SEC West West bad. Maybe Arkansas's a little bit above. Arkansas is a little bounce in between borderline bad and average. But these none of these team two teams right here are bad. Um, Auburn's offense and Mississippi State's defense with Todd Russell gets him uh, get the um, the air game, the pass game going. Against Auburn secondary, which looked kind of kind of so so against Washington State week one, but we saw what Washington State did against USC, which was nothing because their offense was horrible. They only scored a touchdown from a um, an interception return in that game. But they still beat USC. That's all that matters. The W I always say that. But who don't want to pick? I'll pick. I'll pick Auburn. I will close 24 to 21 over Mississippi State. I think their offense will be able to score some points against Mississippi State. And they'll get the W playing at home at night. 
South Florida versus Florida Atlantic. Two bad teams. South Florida's really disappointed me this season. Just offense. Horrible defense is subpar as well. They give up 55 points to make easy state. Florida Atlantic. Who do I want to pick? Who do I want to pick? I'll pick South Florida. The BCS conference team. I'll go 24 to 17 over Florida Atlantic. LSU versus Kent State. If Kent State was still undefeated, which I thought they were going to be after last week, I thought they were going to beat Toledo. Or, yeah, they played no Bowling Green. Uh, but they didn't. Their defense is not as good as they were last year. They had two turnover prone. They have a freshman starting at quarterback going into Death Valley at night. No way. LSU. It'll be an odd score, I think. I'll give LSU 31 points. I'll give Kent State like 17. 31 to 17. Two touchdowns a game. No, let's go 34 to 17. Let's give it a 17 more victory for LSU. Uh, Louisiana Lafayette versus Nickel. Nickel State got a W last week. Who did they play? Wow. They played West. Wait, they beat Western Michigan. Are you kidding me? They beat a Wax School. Nickel State's like the one of the worst teams in all of football. Oh my God. Michael Young with the Nickel State? You learn something every day. Well, that's not the Michael Young I'm thinking of. Okay, never mind. Wow. Wow. Just out of the brain. Oh, Louisiana Lafayette will win. Nickel State got the W last week uh, against Western Michigan, obviously. But um, I'll give Louisiana Lafayette. They can score some points. They've had a really tough two, uh, first two game stretch against Arkansas, Kansas State. But I give them the victory, uh, 42 to 20 in this game. Cincinnati over Northwestern State. Even though Northwestern State, they they've had some quarterbacks that can score some points there. It'll be closer than people think. But I'll give Cincinnati a 38 to 27 point victory over Northwestern State. Kansas State versus UMass. UMass horrible, horrible, horrible. Kansas State uh, got back on track last week after the loss. North Dakota State beat Louisiana Lafayette. Like I just mentioned, and they'll score a ton of points. Ton of points to go 35 to 10 over Massachusetts. Mid Tennessee versus Memphis. Mid Tennessee can score some points. Memphis can't. Mid Tennessee 42. Memphis 28. Vandy and South Carolina. Ooh. Who do I want to go with? Oh man, this is a tough one. Vanderbilt or South Carolina? Vanderbilt. Uh, they got so unlucky with one. Their defense didn't look too great. Their offense looked like they can score some points. Um, Jordan Matthews, heck of a receiver. South Carolina at home at night. Give me the upset. Give me the upset. I, I have Vandy. I, I can feel it in my bones. I feel it in my bones, guys. South Carolina will start SEC play 0-2. The SEC East is so evenly divided, and nobody's do, nobody's standing out out of the SEC West. The only two teams undefeated in the SEC, sorry, SEC East, Missouri and Tennessee right now. Um, but that's not an SEC play because they haven't started SEC play yet. Like only four teams have started SEC play yet. Bandy, Georgia, South Carolina, Ole Miss. Ole Miss gets the victory and evens out the pack even more. I think South Carolina will be a team like Florida easily. But I'll go Vandy. I think I pulled Vandy preseason and pulled this upset. And I'll stick with that. 28-24 to over South Carolina. Another upset pick, Eastern Washington over Toledo. Toledo has a good offense. They can score points, but they haven't done so in the first couple weeks. Eastern Washington can score points. As you saw, they upset Oregon State week one. They have a really dynamic quarterback. They pull another another FCS team will be the FBS level team. I got them winning 45 to 40 over Toledo. Here we go. My South Alabama Jaguars versus the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Whew. South Alabama came out and played good, especially really really early on against uh, Tulane. They, Tulane came back, roaring back in the second half, but at South Alabama held them off and got a two point, two three point victory, two point victory against Tulane, Western Kentucky. Uh, I was there. I thought they were gonna be able to handle Tennessee. I thought they were gonna lose, but not lose by as bad as they did. They had what well, doesn't really help when you have five straight turnovers. That's right, five six straight possessions with turnovers for Western Kentucky. They were winning three nothing and just like that, twenty one nothing on like thirteen straight pick sixes. I'm trying to watch this Redskins game at the same time. Um, South, I believe South Alabama did improve that. Their offense a putrid week one. They played great last week. They created turnovers. Man, if they win this game, this will be the biggest win. Of their, last week was the biggest win in program history. This week would be the biggest win in program history. I'm pulling the upset. 
everybody in the country wants is thinking Western Kentucky is going to win. Tap Alabama, Western Kentucky. I know it was against Tennessee, but they proved that they're suspect to the turnover bug. South Carolina, I mean South Alabama created turnovers week two against Tulane. They'll create more turnovers and capitalize early. Western Kentucky will come swarm back in week in the second half with South Alabama, Ross Matheny, Brandon Bridge, whoever plays quarterback, I believe will have a big game big game. Thirty five to thirty two over Western Kentucky in a close win. It was close last year, it'll be close this year. Maryland versus UConn. UConn's only loss in the season so far. Only game in the season is against t t uh, Towson. I just spit all over my screen. It's Towson and they lost. No reason to give Maryland the loss. I'll give Maryland the W and have them start the season 3 0. And they'll beat Connecticut 35 to 17. And Maryland actually has a quarterback that can play now. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. AC ACC teams. Oklahoma State by 1,000 over Lamar, uh, 52 to 10. Kansas against Rice. Uh, Kansas Jayhawks are teams I've, ever since the total recent years I've pulled for. And they're they're not there yet, but they're they're improving steadily. Rice, so they have a offense that can score. Where I am the one that said before the Texas A&M game that they're going to keep it closer than people thought. They're going to score some points, and they did. Their quarterback was great. So as a guy that like pulls for Kansas, this is a really scary game. But I think somehow Kansas will pull it out out of their butt somehow. In a high scoring game, I'll go 35. 38 to 35 Kansas over Rice in a close but I won't be surprised one bit if Rice wins. They have a really good offense. I'll be surprised if Rice wins this USA. UTEP versus New Mexico State. New Mexico State horrible. UTEP sub horrible. UTEP, UTEP uh, 24 to 21. Marshall Ohio. Uh, Rakeem, who's the, this is actually a good quarterback matchup. People love watching high powered offenses. But good quarterbacks Rakeem Cato. Uh, Marshall and Tyler Tittleton of Ohio playing at Ohio. How does the screen look? It's getting dark and dark. My face probably looks white as molasses. Oh, what's up? Uh, this is. Do I need to turn the lights on? Do you guys care? I hope you don't care. Like, it got dark over this video. Um, I'll give Rakeem Cato and, and the Marshall Thundering Herd the victory. Uh, uh, Ohio's defense, I believe. They they kind of disappointed me the first couple weeks. They lost. Um, I believe Ricky and Cato is a really good quarterback. He does not turn the ball over short. He's like 5'11", 6 foot. He has some good receivers, though. They'll get the W, 45-42 to over Ohio in a high-scoring game. Utah State over Weber State easily, 45-10. to Northwestern over Western Michigan easily. Um, God, 40, that's the team that lost to Nickel State, 42-7. Uh, to and a couple close ones here. Ole Miss versus Texas. Texas was absolutely gashed last week by BYU. 450, 550 yards rushing for BYU. Got Manny Diaz, a defense coordinator, fired right after the game on Sunday. Um, and Ole Miss 2-0 right now. Finally ranked in the top 25, number 25 in the country after victories against uh, the FCS team that played last week and Vanderbilt week one. They're going in. To Austin, Texas, and I believe we'll pull the victory because Texas' defense is nowhere near where I thought they were going to be. Horrible run defense, and Jeff Scott and Bo Wallace will get some points on the ground. Good receivers for Ole Miss defense is a project, um, but I believe Texas won't be able to score enough points. Ole Miss will win by 10 points, 34-24 for Texas. Purdue versus Notre Dame. Notre Dame did lose last week, but they should have no problem with Purdue. Purdue... Uh, was walloped by Cincinnati, who was walloped by Illinois. And uh, this game's at Purdue. Purdue tends to play Notre Dame um, generally close, but I'll go I'll go Notre Dame 31 to 14 over Purdue. Oh, we're almost done, guys. Oh, uh, good. Is this video over 50 minutes? 39. Okay, making great time. All right. Uh, Central Michigan. Knock these games out real quick. Uh, UNLV over Central Michigan, I believe. UNLV's played some pretty tough teams the first couple weeks. UNLV in a close one, 34-31 over Central Michigan. Arizona over Texas San Antonio. The Arizona Wildcats, I'll reiterate this every week until they lose. I project at the team to be completely off the radar to have a potential chance at going to the national championship and shocking the country. There's one team to do so. That will be Arizona this, this year. But they should win this game easily. Texas San Antonio, though, is one of the better, newer FCS team, FBS teams that's been in the league for two, three years. So go Arizona, 42 
UTSA 17 20 17 I'll give them 20 okay two more games to go Utah versus Oregon State Utah has really impressed me the first couple weeks they scored a ton of points last season last week their quarterback whose name I cannot think of he threw for a million yards last last week uh, what's his prick what's his name Cannot think of his name, but he, he he he's really gotten better over time. Uh, he took over for Jordan Lynn last year when he decided to retire from football. I don't understand when college players retire from college football. But Oregon State, though, their defense really suspect, really disappointed me because I had them picked up a sleeper in the Pac-12 North. I actually had them finish second in the Pac-12 preseason ahead of Stanford. I need to stop saying that so people don't think I'm stupid. But it was Weber State that they played last week, and frick, is it this? Travis Wilson, that's his name. Travis Wilson, God, stick in there. But they should win against Oregon State. It'll be a high-powered offensive game. Oregon State will put up some points, but I believe their defense is just too poor this season. They'll get better over time. But I think early on in the season, Utah will grab the victory playing at home at night. Close by a touchdown, but I go 37-30 to over Oregon State. And last game, ooh, this is a tough one, a real tough one. Probably one of the most, probably the most underrated matchup of the week. Arizona State versus Wisconsin is in Arizona, and <sighs> Killer Kelly or James White, or that offense, a Russian uh, James Abinaris defense, Arizona State's offense under Todd Graham. Who to go with? Let me watch this play and ponder who I want to pick. RG three throws it deep. He's got a man in overthrows. And RG3 is looking kind of bad so far, guys. Um, not expected to play good, though, early on. Um, but anyways, my pick. Arizona State at home. Wisconsin, good running attack, good defense. I think it's Arizona State's time to beat them. I think it is. I can't remember who won the matchup last season. I know they played last year, but I believe, I, if I can remember correctly, it was close. It was in Wisconsin. I believe I think Wisconsin won by a slim margin, and uh, I could be wrong. But if that's so, I believe Arizona State gets revenge this year. Taylor Kelly's can establish himself as one of the best quarterbacks that nobody knows about, but they will know about after this game after they beat Wisconsin close, extremely close. But I go 31 to 28, Arizona State over Wisconsin. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash svrtr. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, make sure that you. Tune in for my Alabama versus Texas A&M prediction video tomorrow. Hate me, whatever you want to call it. I want to try to, I want to try to pull some hate. I don't normally pull out hate against teams, but from this, I mean, I I do consider myself a part of the TCC, not as many, not as uh, much as some other people do. I don't come out here and trash talk every week. I'm not a part of that. I like to actually put analysis into my picks, but when I want to trash talk, I will. Um, I just don't see a point in really doing it all the time, but I, I feel up for this matchup. It's it's coming. So make sure to tune in tomorrow. But anyways, see you guys later. Roll time, go socks, go Titans to you. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys later. Oh, and once again, sorry that this was such a late upload. Um, I had a lot to do today. I had a lot to do last night. I was stressing out to the max. College is no joke, guys. I was stressing out to the max. I had no time to make this video. I actually had to make those two other videos that I do uh, week to week. Those NCAA videos that predict the games in the week. I had to do them this morning and I had no time to up make this video, which takes 40 minutes to do so. But uh, I need to stop blabbering on. Upload this video. Catch you guys later.